What's going on YouTube? This is Kyle with Obsessed Auto. Today, the GTI is going stage two. Well, actually, it's just getting a downpipe, but it'll be stage two next week. So, close enough, right? A little calm. And James. And James. Look at him. The man with the plan. Because I can't work on my own car today. So James, right here, gets to work on the bunny. So, the downpipe that I got, if you guys have already seen my unboxing slash first look slash what's next for the GTI video, went to Arm Motorsports and got their catted version. So far, I'm in love with this thing. They went above and beyond to make this thing functional and sensual. I appreciate that in the company. But anyways, let's get to it. So first things first, I'm the realist. I'm just kidding. First thing that's gonna happen is James is gonna disconnect the mass airflow sensor wire right here just like that you just rock it back and forth and then because I have an aftermarket intake on this car he's just gonna loosen back there at the turbo I have one of these connectors so I'm gonna have him get the 8 millimeter and we're gonna get that taken off and then we're gonna get this PCV hose right there taken off and then this whole assembly right here will lift up and out of there and that will allow us to gain access to the top inner 16 millimeter bolt for the downpipe which from what I read online is the biggest bitch and the most time consuming so we're gonna try to knock that out even before we're in the air for those of you at home that are doing this you're more than likely gonna have hardware right there it's probably gonna be a t30 depending on your intake setup but on mine I probably never had that hardware because I bought this intake second hand like a majority of the other things that I buy for this car. Take off this one? Now, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take the one off at the turbo because then this whole thing, it'll just lift out of here as one piece. Okay, let's do it. Full time. Full time. Okay, we're gonna use a little wobbly wobble action here. Here, here first. Wobbly wobble. Wobbly wobble. Okay. And then from there we just have that PCV hose right there that on this shitty ass intake just pulls right off because it doesn't lock. And then you can grab it and pull it out. And here is my used intake. All kinds of fresh oil up in here. Huh? All kinds of fresh oil down that pipe. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, hey. Lubrication. Oh, yeah, there's a... Okay, our downpipe is directly underneath this plate. So you just feel down in there. Is this getting replaced? No, that's the turbo. That's not getting replaced in this video. What? Let me get a fake heart and then we'll... Yeah. yeah, let me get my heart transplant and then we'll talk turbo. I want a KO4 because I've been watching videos. Those sons of bitches are running 12s. Get the anal bead set up properly. So, here's this, but you're not gonna see it with your eye. You're gonna have to see it with your hands. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? You're not gonna see it with your eye, but you're gonna see it with your hands, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're gonna have to feel it, bro. Yep. Hot and freaker. And this right here, if I'm not mistaken, is for an O2 sensor, so we'll unplug that. Because my plan is we're just gonna disconnect all the O2 sensors on the ground and swap them. There's some people that fucking spin them on the car. We're not doing that in this video, we're gonna do it the right way. 
I'm going to use a little WD-40 rust release penetrant because it comes with a straw and I've had better luck with this than I have with PB Blaster. Let's do it. You want to kind of try to figure out where you're spraying? I was just going to go for gold. I know Everywhere. you were. I know you were. No, I wasn't. You were so. No. Even before you said that, I had not sprayed yet. I know you didn't spray yet. Because I was like, hmm. I wonder how hard it'd be to take that fucking heat shield off. Because then we could really see. Now, we've been over this before. That's not happening. We okay. have yeah, been over this? I have. Okay, that ought to be enough on that. And then, can you feel further back to this one? Okay, so is that going to be toward the front or toward the back? That will be towards the engine. This thing's difficult to work on. Yeah, this person right here on the forum, the second post after all of this shit, says, this is how it went for me and my friend. Enter upper down pipe flange nut, three hours. Rest of removal plus installation, 45 minutes. It was awful. So just as one bolt? Just that one that you can't even feel. It said three hours. Why'd it go back together so quickly? It just said, fuck that bolt? It probably snapped it. Okay, so it's been confirmed the correct size. Fuck that. So it's been confirmed the correct size for the downpipe nuts are 16 millimeter. You heard it here first, correct. All right, so the plan of attack that we've come up with because the nuts actually face in this way. So the we're stud. gonna. Okay. Well, I'm talking about the nut. Oh well. I'm the talking stud's about standing my... over to my right over here. Okay. Oh yeah, that's me. <laughs> There's a nut, and we'll, so what we're gonna attempt to do, guys, is go through this hot mess of wires and brake booster and heat shield, heat shield, with a swivel, and try to come at it that way. So we'll let you know if that works out. You'll see. It. Maybe. And I ain't gonna be able to see a whole lot. Welcome to Under the Car of James. <laughs> we are here. This is a new series. We're going to call it Car Time with James. We will periodically spend time underneath various different vehicles and discuss life, cars, and women. Alright guys, we're underneath the car here on the passenger side that I hope you guys have a great angle of, but you probably don't. Trust me, it's here. Anyways, we got some 10 millimeter bolts right here. Nope. No, they like might even be plastic nuts. They're plastic nuts. They're plastic nuts, people. Plastic nuts, implants. Anyways, and we got to take these off because we got to get this plastic shield down so that we can get to the wire harness for that O2 sensor, and that's probably all fucked up. What the camera view? Oh, you're talking about O2 sensor. That shit freaking bridge. No, that's not fucking with me. <laughs> Anyways, let's get to it. Just take out all those bolts and uh, the whole thing just kind of falls down and we're going to scoot that out of the way now. Here's kind of what it looks like. Just a plastic dildo. Nothing big. Hey, dildo. Alright, it's a plastic shroud. Dildo sounded better to me at the time. Not anymore though, because I would agree. I mean, if your guys' dildos look like that, you should probably talk to somebody. Okay. You should consult. <laughs> you should find a friend. Is Comedic even a word? I, I don't think Comedic. Um, okay. Once that plastic shield is removed, you're greeted with this little plastic, we'll call it a hanger. That, and this is the wire harness for the O2 sensor right here. So, what we're going to do is... I think you just kind of pull on it and it just comes off like that. And there is a connector there that we can disconnect to get the O2 wire free. Right there. I just want to show you guys that. Uh, yeah, come back next week. Come back next week when we're done. I'll just put my head. Okay, what? okay, that was just water. Water in the eye from your AC. Under your butt. And that's why I wanted the cloth, but it, it was too little too late. Oh. 
Is that all on camera? Oh, that's all on camera. Jesus. Okay, okay guys. Back to some serious shit. Back to real Alright, so we're back underneath the car now, and where I'm shining the flashlight, as you guys can see, there's three nuts that we need to take off of the studs right there. There's another one, yep, you can see Kyle's finger right there. There's another one at the very top that we can't actually see. That one's going to be the one that everybody says is so difficult to get off. So that'll be fun to see how that turns out. So what we're going to do right now is try to take off those three bolts. Actually, we're not going to try. We're going to succeed because we're men. But we're going to get those three nuts off and go from there. All right, guys. So what we're doing is this little heat shield's in my way. So it's just two 16-millimeter bolts, and we're going to go ahead and extract those real quick. And that should give us a little bit more room to get up there and get at these these uh, nuts a little bit better on the downpipe. It'll help us get at the downpipe that much easier. And just like that, it's out of there. Look at that. It's a turbo. Herb skis. Anyways, right where I'm shining the flashlight, look at how much more room we have to get those nuts. So let's do it. I don't know which way to hold this fucking camera. All right, guys, we got the bolts off the downpipe now. So what we're going to do next is these two bolts right here that actually it's like a bracket that hold on. There's the cat. So that kind of tells you an idea where this bracket's at. And it is two 13 millimeter bolts. So I'm getting ready to take those off now. And then after that, there is a little cross member right there, which if I... I can't tell what size those bolts are, but they're around a 10 if I saw them right. They look like Kyle's thinking they're a 10. We'll find out. I'll update you when I get back there. And then we'll go back there and undo the exhaust right before that 90 over there. Looks like, uh, what do you call that, Kyle? Cat bag. Then we're going to disconnect the cat back right there. And uh, well, yeah, we'll get rolling. This line right here, this wire. Connects here, connects there, and your connection connections right there. That's for your O2 sensor. And honestly, since this is rolling, I'm going to talk to you guys for a minute. Heart to heart time with Kyle. Okay. And we're watching the Strad Man. Yeah, but we paused him so that I can have a heart to heart with our viewers. So, everybody on this top inner bolt, the one that's closest to the motor, is saying that you got to have an extension on your shit and be all the way out here. You got to like give up your firstborn child and all this stuff. I strongly disagree. I did it with this. Just a normal size snap-on ratchet and a deep well 16. That's all you need right there and it'll come off. It took what, 10 minutes? Yeah, at the most. Tops? I mean, shit. Honestly, I think that one was easier than the other three bolts, yep. if I'm being 100% honest. So we got you guys up top because I wanted to have a heart to heart with you about that. You don't need an extravagant swivel setup. You don't need this. You don't need that. You just need the desire to get it off and get your new downpipe on. But I've got you back up here because I wanted to show you this line right here. This is for your oxygen sensor, your, your uh, upstream, not your downstream. So with this, you just pull it off of here and then we'll probably get my... Uh, interior pry tool pull that out and then disconnect it right here and drop it down because we're going to just put the oxygen sensors on on the ground and then feed the wires back up so this is hard to hard time with kyle we'll catch you back on the flip side all right guys as you can see we won the fight was real it's out now i want to show you guys something back here I don't know if his car had a different clamp on it or if Kyle's car, I don't know if Kyle's car had a different clamp on it, but this clamp was upside down in there so you couldn't really get any, so you couldn't really get a wrench on it and also very rounded nut. So I ended up just cutting that off with a cutoff wheel. So just bear that in mind if you decide to do that, do this yourself, you may need a cutoff wheel to get those bolts out for this clamp. And then basically after he got it out, I came out here because I didn't hear the cutoff wheel anymore so I got excited naturally. So I went ahead and got the upstream and the downstream O2 sensor out. To do that, all you need is a 7 8 open end wrench, just like that, and a little bit of leverage. 
They usually come out without a fight. Usually. And when we install them with the when we install the old O2 sensors into the new one, I'm going to use some of this anti-seize copper. It's the high temperature. A little more expensive, but it ensures that they're not going to get stuck in there. So next step is we got to get this mounting bracket off and then start piecing the new downpipe up and fire it up, see how it sounds. All right guys, here is the side-by-side -side comparison, as you can probably tell, between the factory downpipe off a of Mark VI GTI and the ARM Motorsports catted downpipe for a Mark VI GTI. Right off the bat, you notice there's no cat right in the beginning like there is with the factory. And another thing, right off the bat, is off of this big ass cat that they put, you go into a very, very restricted 90. Then you go into your flex pipe. Right here, you just have a full three inch continuous mandrel bend on the arm down pipe. You have your spot where you can bolt in your factory bracket, well not factory, but it'll bolt into the factory location. You have the third bung for all you emission controlled car people, the CBFA, I don't know, the, whatever is not CCTA, because that's what I have, so I don't give a shit about that until I add a wideband O2 with an air fuel ratio gauge. Anywho. And then you have your catted section, which as you can tell, you have your factory cat, which pretty well takes up my whole hand, and your 200 cell aftermarket cat, which is substantially smaller. And you go three inch all the way, as opposed to the two and a half inch. You go three inch all the way, as opposed to the two and a half inch. And then right here at the collector, they have this piece right here which this may be problematic for us, it may not. Um, Jacob at Arms said that they did experience some issues with some of these being too short and not mating up to a factory exhaust system. For all you guys that have an aftermarket, you should be just A-OK -okay of a factory exhaust, so that may pose an issue, hopefully not. So yeah, next thing we've got is just put some uh, anti-seize on the oxygen sensors put those in probably put some Loctite on the plug that we're not using for the third oxygen sensor and we're gonna start bolting this back up in here and of course do a test fire with no exhaust hooked up who doesn't do that when you do exhaust work what do you think so far James third job but it's very doable at home very doable at home. As you can tell, jack, jack stands. There's no lift here. And he's only a little dirty. <laughs> Just a little dirty. So yeah, we will uh, get this thing thrown back in there. And by we, I mean James, because I can't do shit. So, thanks for watching. All right guys, so a little rundown of what it took to get to this point right here. You may or may not have the same issues that James ran into. This top bolt right here, the top bolt that I'm pointing to that is closest to the motor on the top is one of the most hyped up bolts I've ever heard of in my life. It was not that bad. James said he thinks that was easier than the bottom three. Um, Getting your bracket off right here takes a little bit of elbow grease. Um, pry bar. Yeah, a pry bar or a buddy. And then down there where you made up to your stock cat back, that was very problematic. We're going to end up um, reusing that hopefully and just putting different hardware in there. Um, thus far on the new one the fitment for the mount in the bracket is perfect so far 
I mean, that is just spot on dead nuts, just perfect. I know a lot of people talk online saying that there was, wasn't perfect, they had to bend it this way, bend it that way, yada yada yada. This one, perfect. We got the front oxygen sensor in and a little Loctite on my plug. And as James is fishing this up in there, I'm going to get the oxygen sensor in the catted tube. And basically, you've got your four bolts here. You're going to have your two bolts on the bracket plus the one bolt that you didn't have to worry about on the factory because this one bolts in for the mount. You're going to have the two bolts back at the cat back. And then we did a total of eight cross member bolts mm -hmm. because James took down both cross members so we could cut those. And then however many it took to take out the uh, passenger side plastics. What is that? 10, 12, something like that? Of those plastic nuts. Um, honestly, that's, that's pretty much it. Oh, and the heat shield that goes around the axle. That was two 16 millimeters and honestly I think that's it so we're filming this just in case the footage is garbage but hopefully we have some usable footage that'll help you guys at home that are trying to do this on your own hopefully we can help you because uh, that's why we do what we do if we can help you guys to where you don't have to go to a shop it's a good day for us isn't it James hell yeah brother <laughs> We're doing it for Dale in a Volkswagen. So that's about it. Um, we'll catch you guys here on the flip side. All right, guys. So we're down here underneath the car now, and I just got done running, or actually getting that new downpipe up on the studs there. Sorry, I couldn't actually film that part. Very difficult to film on the ground as well as fish this up there. So right now, we're starting the... We're starting the nuts. Kyle's actually starting the difficult one right now. We're going to get those kind of just hand tight for now. We probably won't torque them down until we get the other parts ran. That way it gives us some flexibility. Well, Kyle says we're going to torque them down. He said, fuck the bullshit. So that's the update. Just real easy here. Just kind of fish it through this back plate here. Pass this cross member. Just put it in back that way. Fish it in and just land it on the studs after you put your new gasket on. Welcome back. We're back underneath the car. Welcome to, the car Welcome to underneath the car of James. In this episode, we're going to host Zach Galifianakis. Can't even say his fucking name because it's all fucked up. All right. All right, guys. So I know the lighting is probably piss poor because Kyle has shut the hood. However, you can see in there, it is up. The bolts are tight. So far, everything has fit 100%. There's been no issues, everything is just bolted right in. Including this little bracket here, which you can see is a little bit different from factory. Everything so far has just worked. What we're getting ready to do next, as you can see, we're not quite connected back there. We're getting ready to line that up back there and see what, what happens. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry guys. Holy shit. Why? Um, Don't say that to me. No, well, it's not the car. It's the GoPro. Okay, what? I'm, I'm going to bring it out to you. You want a picture? No. Nope. There. Look at the back side of that bitch. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, my. Hmm. <laughs> Mike, that's all fucked up. Trigger Mike. Oh, shit. Oh, God. So, since this is still recording, this is what James was talking about right here. This little micro SD, we've been charging the GoPro as we've been going because it's been dead. It's, uh, it's had better days. It's all dicked up. Ready?
right, guys. So that's what you got for the GTI downpipe install. Hopefully you enjoyed, found it helpful. Um, if you're on the fence about buying Arm Motorsports downpipe, I would say take that plunge and do it. If you're second guessing yourself, just don't, just go for it. Appreciate you watching. Comment down below if you have any questions about the Arm Motorsports downpipe or the installation of this. I'm sure that James over here can give a little bit of insight on that. And as always, thanks for watching. Have a great day. All right, so as you can see, I'm editing this video right now. Um, I've decided to make two videos out of this. Um, you're gonna have the video that you're watching right now that is the installation of the downpipe. And towards the end of the video, well actually at the very end of the video, it's gonna have our logo up and it's gonna have the newest release and then the most whatever. I'm gonna have a link to that video there. And it's also gonna have a button to subscribe. So please hit that subscribe button and then click the link to watch the sound clip video. In this video, I did give you a sound clip of an open downpipe and honestly I'm thinking about trying to get a three inch exhaust cut out so I can run like that at the track but that may not happen I don't know I have a lot of things to worry about other than that right now but that sounds pretty fun doesn't it so hopefully you did enjoy this video um, I'm gonna set a bar. I'd like to hit 30 likes on this video. If we could get 30 likes, that'd be dope. Um, yeah. Hit the subscribe button at the very end here as you click so you can listen to the sound clip, the before and after. Didn't change anything else with the exhaust. It's just the Arm Motorsports downpipe. And I'm not sponsored or anything by Arm. I didn't get a kickback from them, anything like that. But. I'm going to talk up their product because it is truly, in my opinion, from what I've seen thus far, we're 24 hours deep. I appreciate the quality of the build. I appreciate the time that went in to what they make. You usually don't see companies that grind down the welds inside of a tube. Arm did. So, of course, I'm going to talk them up. And wink, wink, nudge, nudge. If you guys are watching and you want to work with me anymore, I might need a front mount intercooler. Just maybe. <laughs> oh shit. Alright guys. Have a great day.